Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, well, we might as well call this uh, emergency meeting to order. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, not something that happens often, but uh, it, it occurred to us that uh, it makes sense to um, talk a little bit about um, what's going on with the current uh, COVID-19 situation. Um, so, Judy, if we can, uh, I guess, call the roll. Yes, Housh. Um, here. McQueen. Here. Stokes. Here. Krieger. Present. Curlis. Here. Also present village manager, Josue Salmarone. Public Works Director, Johnny Burns. Planning and Zoning Administrator, Denise Swinger. And Finance Director, Colleen Harris. Um, so yeah, I guess I just want to open up with a couple quick statements and also allow any other council members to kind of weigh in on, um, you know, what, you know, from my connection with uh, the Yellow Spring Schools, um, with Rails to Trails Conservancy, which is a national nonprofit with the village. Um, one thing that I've like recognized is that uh, things change like every hour. And, uh, you know, something where I think like an attitude of we'll just push through and we're a small village and we don't need to worry. You know, I, it's become apparent to me that uh, uh, we need to think about a few things. So I want to highlight, um, I really appreciated Lisa Krieger, uh, fellow council member, shared two articles which we could put on our Facebook page, one about cancel everything, um, which has uh, resonated with me and it's been a part of like everything that's going on with my other affiliations. And the other thing is uh, related to flattening the curve, um, which is, uh, I don't want to talk a lot about this social distancing like uh, phrase that's gaining a lot of traction, but at the same time I think that uh, there are a lot of aspects of where we need to, you know, think about what we're doing, and uh, and I'm really happy that the village is being proactive about this, uh, much more so I've learned than our state legislators and and others who are just now trying to figure out what they're going to do. Um, the last thing I want to say is that um, I'm just kind of related to that push through like concept, which is that. Um, I think it's important to uh, continue things that are important, but you know, at the same time recognize that there are some activities that um, can easily be postponed uh, and rethought and virtualized or whatever. And so uh, you know, I guess I want everybody, because I know we're all like good Americans work ethic to realize that uh, you know we, can make some differences that um, Lisa Krieger, resident nurse uh, expert, uh, can articulate a lot better than me. So Lisa, I'll let you, if you want to make any comments and then other council members after that, and then we'll turn it over to our village manager. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I, for a period of days, found myself sort of like with this, one one opinion and then the other on one hand saying well this is an overreaction like just wash your hands and be careful and be smart it'll be fine and then the other side of me was like but you know mm, what but what about this right um i've been heavily influenced by um the center for disease control which I think is the best source of information. And, you know, there's more and more compelling information. We're fortunate in a way here in Ohio and here in, in Yellow Springs in that we um, have the experience of other areas um, to learn from. And I'm very deeply connected to Washington State. Washington State could be called the epicenter of what's going on in many ways. And I've been in touch with acquaintances who are also epidemiologists and infection control people there. And, and without exception, the main thing that they're saying is we waited too long to pay attention. 
we waited too long to pay attention. And now they're in a, a <coughs> position where they have to just try to react. They have to, I mean, it, it's sweeping. Um, I talked to a friend in Chicago last night. Their number of, diag of diagnoses are doubling every day. We're not facing that here yet. And so it's a perfect opportunity to take, to be proactive and be smart. I mean, and also to not, you know, we don't want to become fear-based and instill panic because it's true that um, the virus has a higher uh, death rate than the conventional flu. But it's, it still is, um, it tends to attack our, our most vulnerable populations. And I'm concerned because in Yellow Springs, we have a lot of seniors. And you know that we have then by very nature of our population, high risk. Uh, kids seem to be less at risk, but I'm not so, I mean, many, I, I don't, I'm not concerned so much about if I get it, what will happen to me, but who might I carry it to? And that's the thing, because you don't know who you're going to give it to who's going to take it to somebody else who maybe doesn't have the same resistance. So I'm really proud that um, we're all thinking together about, you know, what we can do, what the response rate is. Um, one of the biggest concerns that I have has to do with we know we have problems with food insecurity in the village. And if the kids are out of school, um, are they getting enough to eat? How do we, how do we help them? You know, how, can we be certain that I don't, we have this awesome senior center, but I just am worried about, about people that might not be able to get the social services they need and we might not know where they are and how to help them. So I think that we need to grapple with, with those kinds of issues more than we need to focus on, on um, uh, you know, staying three to six feet away from each other. But however, I know you don't want to, you said you didn't want to focus on that too much, but hand washing, three to six feet of social isolation from other people, and don't touch your face, and sanitizing does seem to work. Right. So, you know, it does, it does require a behavior change, but those do seem to be things that work. Right. Um, I, I may think of other things I want to say, but I'll, I'll, uh, le I'll give up the floor um, for now. Yeah, and I guess my point was more that I feel like the social distancing phraseology is a way to, like, open a problematic door, but I don't disagree that hand washing and all that. Mm -hmm. I've been doing my ABCs mm -hmm. yep. since you said that <laughs> every time I wash. Good. Um, Kevin? I just some, yeah, just um, I also work at Nanyak College, and of course when you hear, you know, Ohio State, UD, you know, all these bigger colleges, and, uh, and in the course there was times where folks were talking about large crowds. Well, um, all of Antioch together couldn't form a large crowd, but when you just consider that it really doesn't take a large crowd, to Lisa's point, is just, you know, that easy transfer, you know, who you're going to share it with, even though you're not asymptomatic yourself. Um, so, you know, the college is, um, is pretty much shutting down um, for, for this period. Uh, the, I think the original thought was, well, we're a week away from the end of the term, let's just ride it out. I think Brian alluded to that, that push through and ride it out. But um, what happens at the end of this term is uh, we have a cohort of students who are away on co-op, and some of them are international uh, placements. So, you know, we are making preparations for what to do, you know, when those students uh, return. Certainly echo Lisa's concerns about the, uh, the food insecurity and how um, those families are going to be impacted. Um, you know, and it's, it's uh, you know, when you hear about other communities doing it, you think, oh, wow, that's how very drastic, uh, with no thought about how they're going to handle the aftermath. And I think certainly this is the time where we ought to be thinking about, you know, the aftermath of, of this, of what seems like a singular decision. But again, it has ramifications beyond what we might think of in the, in the, in the meantime. I, by the way, probably will be traveling <laughs> to Florida for a week. Uh, certainly, I will uh, follow uh, appropriate advice in terms of uh, sequestering myself, as it were, uh, if we indeed do go through. I mean, but this, that's the plan right now, but if it changes, and I think that's what everybody just needs to do, be responsible, you know, follow, follow uh, guidance from appropriate sources, uh, CDC starting there, I think. Um, 
And again, I don't think we need to reiterate a lot of what's been said, and uh, I think we just want to eventually get to business. But I'll stop there and uh, yield the floor. Okay, Laura? Um, I just want to say I listened to the governor's um, press conference today, and I think Josue is going to cover a lot of that. If he misses something, I might ask to have the floor again later. Um, but yeah, it's something new in our experience. Those of us who are older, this is it, yeah, it's just so novel. Now, I have talked to some people in town. I talked to Karen at the senior center. I'm aware that tomorrow morning there's a meeting of a lot of heads of nonprofits to talk about their response and what they can do. Um, as I understand it, that there will be an opportunity for people who are well to help with some driving of delivery of medicine and food to doors, not, you know, keeping. And I'm modeling intentionally social distance here because in my circle, and I think everybody needs to think, who in your circle is immunocompromised, who's older, you know, it's, it's not just about, you know, big strong me, right? It's about those people who I might affect. So it is, all these things are really important and we'll hear, hear more and I'll try to fill in on what the governor said today. All right, thanks, Laura. Marianne? Yeah, well, <coughs> when I first started thinking about it, I was thinking about me, I won't get this thing here. And uh, it's only recently that I have understood, first, since our federal government has been, pro I would say, more than useless <coughs> in this, it really, I think, it has to be at the local level that we're doing it. And what I've come to understand, the, the leveling of the curve, the impact that it could have on our health system if all of a sudden a number of people are being in need of medical attention, our health system just couldn't handle it. So this not going to meetings, distancing, whatever we're doing, it's not stopping the disease, but it is going to spread it out so that hopefully our medical systems won't be so over compromise that they can't handle it. And yeah, and not, I'm, I mean, I, I, I was thinking about this, the utility roundup, and I thought, you know, I, I'm this grandmother to these little babies who were premature to begin with. Now, may, I don't know if they get or not, but then one of my best friends is severely immunocompromised, and I do not want to be a vector for those people, so. Um, yeah, we, we need to take local responsibility. I think that that's the best we can do. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone. And I just wanna, um, in handing it over to Josue, also recognize, um, you know, since we all listen to NPR a lot, uh, that, you know, the focus has been on <coughs> different localities, different contexts, different responses, different, you know, issues. And, um, you know, and I think that's one of the things that we're going to be mindful of, not overreacting, but, you know, again, recognizing that um, there is a lot of anxiety and a lot of concern. And, um, you know, I think, again, there's a way that we can balance those interests. And uh, I think things can still happen, but, you know, some things may need to be thought about differently. So uh, with that, uh, Josue, um, let's talk about what the village uh, response is. Yes, thank you, Brian. I appreciate what, um, what everyone has shared. And I also appreciate having the tools that allowed us to call this an emergency council meeting um, to order and for us to have a, be on the same page around messaging. We're all informed about what actions we're taking to take all the precaution, all the precautionary actions we can take at the local level. I agree with Marianne that there's a lot that local communities can do to protect the vulnerable populations, and it really happens in the communities. Uh, so I appreciate having the opportunity to have this meeting and provide the update. We have been monitoring the situation over the last couple of weeks um, through the various departments. Our police chief has attended various meetings, from police-specific uh, uh, meetings to emergency management. I myself have attended emergency management meetings, and we've been monitoring the, how the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has unfolded. And until over the last three days, we started more thinking, so thinking more seriously about what actions we need to take at the local level to uh, get ahead of the, the, the pandemic. Um, yesterday, this, 
The, this was formally declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization, uh, and we knew that what the actions we needed to take today and what the governor, uh, the executive actions that the governors took today that would be effective uh, Monday um, were coming. Uh, right now, we're looking at five confirmed cases in Ohio with 52 individuals under investigation. This was the report as of 2 p.m. today. The professionals expect this number to double in the next, in the next six days, um, and it may double several more times after that at the national level. Uh, so we are facing serious circumstances uh, within the state. Um, I believe there's more information that may come out there's more information that may come out later today or in the next day about uh, additional exposures in Ohio, and we'll wait for information to be formally released on that. Um, so my comments today will be limited to what information has been formally distributed and vetted um, today. And that was, those are those five cases, those 52 individuals that are under, under investigation. So, as you know, today, from Laura Curlis mentioned uh, uh, today's uh, press conference by Governor Mike DeWine, um, where he took a more firm, posi uh, firm position <coughs> on several elements of the emergency response. Um, you've heard about the senior centers. That has been more formal policy has been instituted in the senior center. No one's to visit the senior centers unless they have urgent business. They're logging everyone who's attending the senior centers. Why? Because that's among the most vulnerable populations. Firm order has been issued on mass gatherings. Um, at a day ago, we were looking at possibly a thousand folks and uh, could not gather. Now that number is officially a hundred individuals or greater. That's now considered a mass gathering. Um, if you think about that number, can we could easily get to a hundred? The, additionally, the uh, order has affected schools. Effective Monday, um, schools are being canceled. So what does that mean for us? We're taking action to close the John Bryan Center to non-governmental activities. That includes recreational and educational activities. Um, so we would, our building will remain open for government business. Um, because we have essential services to, op to provide. Those essential services are public safety, they involve delivery of water, delivery of power to residents, and we have a plan to deliver all of our services to the residents um, as, their, as normal operations. We are also prepared for the worst case scenario where we could lose 50% of our workforce to being exposed. They don't have to get sick, but they're, if they're exposed, they have to be quarantined. So we, we have contingency plans in place um, to look at how we will continue operations with 50% or less of our workforce. So each department has been tasked to evaluate their, their resources, uh, identify the individuals of their team who can carry the work for the next in line. So we've done that exercise with every department in our, in our organization, and we're confident that we would deliver all of our services to our residents. Uh, so that's the, on, the, on the operation side. And all of our managers are available today to speak more specifically on any particular functions of their department. On the programmatic side, I mentioned that we're canceling all non-governmental activities. So all of our Recreational activities, that's the volleyball teams, the basketball teams, the special events, the birthday parties, the weddings, all those things that, tip, that are common uh, here in our building, those are being canceled. Um, our youth center, who on a regular basis hosts 30 to 40 youth, many of which, to Lisa's point, um, that are dependent for our center for an evening snack and, um, and school support. Uh, that center will be closed effective uh, tomorrow. So we are saddened that we have to take this uh, action, but it is a necessary action to level the curve, if you will, um, because we cannot contribute to the utilization and overwhelming of the healthcare system by allowing folks to gather and create an unnecessary exposure. So that's a, br a brief update. I welcome questions.
from council and the audience on what we're doing around operations and programming. I have a question, maybe it would be more for Lisa, and I don't think it's a known answer, but is there any sense of a range of how long these precautions would be, I mean, weeks, months? Um, you're right, there's, there's no answer, and one thing that's, I mean, it's a tricky bug, and there isn't even one incubation period. So, in other words, I mean, I just got back from a week on the road. It might be two days or it might be seven before I would get sick or even longer, and or I wouldn't 14. even know it, right? 14 days, some mm -hmm. people. So mm -hmm. it's a tricky bug. So that, that makes it hard to calculate. Um, the um, national companies that I work with uh, right now have started, cam oh, sorry, canceling um, all travel and large group gatherings um, through the end of April. They've already just done that. So, you know, I would say it's, it, it's going to be, I would say months. Mm -hmm. The governor today said the order to close schools was for three weeks for starting three weeks. Monday, and mm -hmm. he said they would reassess at the end of three weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it won't be, it, we won't be done in three weeks. Right, and our plan is to cancel activities through April 6th, that's three weeks, and we'll evaluate that, that last week on what, um, what actions we need to take. Sway or, or Chief, can you address how police are, I'm not sure if this is on, how police are handling um, their contact with citizens, any shifts, modifications? Yes, we have additional protect, personal protective equipment and we're taking uh, steps to limit the interaction and exposure to the police officers. So Police Chief, if you Absolutely. could uh, weigh in on the additional precautions you're taking. Thanks, Audrey. Um, business as usual for the police department. We do have some protocol that we'll follow. It won't affect citizens in any way. Um, we will be patrolling more in our cars than is typical. Um, we want to be available and healthy for calls for service, of course. We have been issued from the Department of Health um, the proper masks that we need. We, we've gloved up. Um, we've uh, had meetings about protocol regarding you know how, when and how. Uh, it, it is kind of business as usual for us, though, uh, regarding, you know, sanitizing hands, when to use gloves, clean your boots. I mean, that's normal protocol for us anyway. We're just going to be very aware of it. I would like to ask, um, be, because the youth center will be closed, um, if anyone um, is able to give any, any type of donation um, to help us on the streets with the kids that we'll be working with that are here a lot and, and just anyone in general. Florence asked me to do a shout out for that. Um, bring anything you can to the police department and we'll take it from there. We really appreciate that help. So can you talk about that a little bit more because I guess that's the thing that's on my mind is how do we you know, respond to um, you know, the youth that are not going to be in school for three weeks and uh, so, so yes so we'll, we'll be engaging like we always do and checking on anyone we see as always it would be uh, it would be nice for us to maybe have a little bit more of a stockpile regarding um, food if there's any donations anything new um, that we could bring in we have Florence today uh, stocked up on bread um, some of the essentials for the early on uh, period um, but again I think um, money speaks volumes where we are uh, just for example today Florence you know passed the hat and she uh, she pulled together rent for someone um, utilities are left on um, but we could sure use more assistance in that department um, uh, thank you um, the, I'll be glad to uh, reach out to Gina Marie um, from the Community Foundation um, she had mentioned in a prior conversation that perhaps the community foundation would be able to financially support some of these kinds of issues so um, that'd be great i think I some of the food that. pantries will be closing um but things like granola bars 
you know, Nutrigrain bars, the simple snack food, that's great. They help tremendously with officers because we can put a box in the car and as we're out, you know, through our shift, we can distribute those. Juice boxes, things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna just make a comment on that. There will absolutely be kids home alone who are not normally home alone because they have to be. So real simple food to cook like ramen and things like that are, are useful because not everyone gets to have somebody home to take care of them. And you know, don't hesitate. Calls for anything. That's what we're here for. We're, we'll be. We'll show up. We'll be there. Um, everyone's you know at the ready at the PD. And um, I I would like to just suggest since I have the microphone for a moment, but I think it's important that we we are you know pragmatic in our decisions. Um, I'm going to mention to the boss after the meeting, but you know I'd uh, like to talk about maybe changing the venue of some of our meetings coming up um, for specific reasons. I'd like to uh, suggest to you if you have parties and people coming in town, you know, just take that into consideration. Um, one of the things that you know changes the, the the variable on this is you know proximity. And so when people travel, they come in, people go from gas station to gas station. I mean, that's where, you know, we can see the, the numbers increase. But I don't, you know, I think for us, it's business as usual. On this uh, topic of parties, as you know, the governor's order is no, ga no mass gatherings of 100 or more. And it's up to our local enforcement agencies to enforce that order. So we kindly ask that the public not put our law enforcement in that situation where we have to break up parties. Um, so we ask that they follow the order. Uh, but we stand by ready to break up gatherings of 100 uh, individuals or more. Yes, thanks, I'm sorry. All right, thanks, Chief. Thank you. Um, I guess I just want to reiterate, um, I understand that we have a pretty good handle on um, our youth population that um, needs support you know, from the, the youth center. Uh, but I also want to make sure we coordinate with the Yellow Spring schools to identify any other students. And uh, I mean, I, I have some different ideas about, um, you know, besides the community foundation, how we can uh, make sure that they're, you know, getting lunch and that sort of thing. So, Karen? Another important resource for the children is the Green County Libraries. I was just on the phone with Carl Cologne, and they are. Um, already on it they and actually Carl will be at the meeting tomorrow so he'll be able to talk about what the libraries are doing um, he has obviously has the very same concerns about children needing a place to be and they are actually working on plans to have activities for children that are separated and taking into account the social distancing so um, I don't have all the details but they are certainly an important partner Yep. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, and, and I, I wonder, you know, as we see how this pans out, you know, how, how we can also facilitate um, still, you know, some support services through the Bryan Center, um, but, you know, in, in the spirit of separation. So. Okay, next one. On the we'll note on the utility, um, payment since uh, Chief brought up the utilities issue. We, we feel fortunate that we're sort of on the slow section of the month. All utility payments are due on the, on the 15th, which will be the 16th on Monday. And we encourage residents who are particularly, they, they come in and, and pay their utility payment to use the drop-off box. Um, we'll credit their payment. We'll waive any fees if it comes in late. Um, but we strongly encourage residents to use the Dropbox. Um, we also feel fortunate that most of our user base is on ACH and, and uh, wire, so our cash customers are very little. And so I just wanted to make that recommendation to the, to the residents. Okay. Any other questions on operations? <coughs> All right. Uh, Ruth sure, Ruthann. I just wanted to say um, from a human resource standpoint, um, we realized today by talking with our staff that 
there can be a lot of anxiety for people as they process this and you mentioned the word anxiety brian and so we're just trying to be cognizant of being there um, mentally supportive for employees and i was thinking about the businesses karen and if if any of the businesses locally need human resource um, sources i found some good information today um, from the ohio department of health and just supporting staff and being a place for what do you say to your employees about coming to work not coming to work and that sort of thing so even if i can just be a resource for that but us being aware of um, the impact that it is having on people and it could be because their spouse is at home freaking out because they're not working or if so we just um, we're all trying to just say, just be really kind to each other right now because everybody's just really stressed out and um, for various reasons because of the unknown. So we're here if we can give you just a referral to somebody who is an expert. So thank you Thanks for, for bringing thing. that up. You know, one other thing that, that comes to mind that's a very significant impact is economic. I mean, we of course the markets are plummeting, but more locally, um, you know, I was, I was downtown today and it, it was deserted, which is on one hand the good, but I, I certainly know the, there's tremendous loss of income to our businesses and, you know, that can have a, a trickle down impact. So I'm not sure what to do about that other than to acknowledge that um, the, the impact of, of this pandemic is is broad sweeping and that once we are through it we'll have a great opportunity to support our businesses yeah in an even more uh, robust way maybe than we have before to help them recover um, mm -hmm. and I I don't know if uh, you know we should be thinking about short-term loans or I, I don't I mean I'm just you know thinking if there's a way if some of our businesses in town are um, in an emergency situation, I, I don't know how close they're running it, you know, to stay open, if, if we might be able to figure out some way to help in the short run. Can I? Yes. I do want to, I'm Kelly Ann Tracy. Please. And um, I do want to say, I think this is an awesome opportunity for us as a village to come together. And I know that um, some of the things that I'm concerned about are those that we have that are aged, that live alone, that maybe don't have resources available of family members nearby um, to ensure that they don't fall you know, through the cracks, that as a village, we can kind of come together find out who your neighbor is, if you have friends or family or, or relative or people within our, neighbor, our village that you know are live by themselves, start a communication with them, how we can have a check-in system as far as that goes. Um, we already are impacted financially right now because we have families right now whose children are now gonna be out of school, who uh, the, um, we don't know whether those parents have paid time off they're able to take to be with their children off out of school. So we're gonna have the cost of all that. We have some of our, the people in our town that make the least amount of money are the ones that work for our, the, our village and work for our stores. Many of them don't have insurance themselves, don't have a, a ability to go get medical care, um, are gonna be without wages. So I think just as a village, if we could start thinking about how we can assist those who are gonna be impacted the most financially or the ones that are at the most risk, um, I think that can go a long way for us. And then come together as a group volunteer-wise that um, we can um, work on things that you guys are gonna bring out. The, the village Thank government you. has several hourly employees and our plan is to continue to have them working and we'll, there's other activities we will have them do during their time here that they would otherwise be doing such as the, the youth center staff um, will be using them in other projects during the time. So those are, I recognize your concern and that's a real concern for me and for other managers in the jurisdiction that the hourly employees are gonna hurt through these next three weeks that this order is in place. Because a lot of folks are gonna consume less of the retail businesses and they're not gonna be working, so. All right. Karen, would you like? 
Karen Wintrow with the Yellow Springs Chamber. Um, I mean, this has obviously escalated very quickly. I started working on it yesterday, and today it just, everything just turned around. But we've established a web page. We're reaching out. I'll be at the meeting tomorrow. Um, I'm kind of holding off some things until we kind of, until I really get the whole picture of what's happening in the community. We actually heard from Terry Holden, um, superintendent of schools at our chamber board meeting this morning, and she was talking about you know trying to hold off on school closure, and obviously there isn't a choice on that one. So, um, you know, we've obviously all got to work together on this. I have some ideas for the businesses. I mean, I'm thinking of, you know trying to work out some, some food delivery options from the restaurants. There's really only a couple that offer delivery service. Maybe that's an answer. That's not easy to set up, but we'll, you know, that's one thing to look into. If shops can, you know, could potentially gear up to do more online sales um, to, to get things, just to keep business going while, and sales going. Um, although the other thing I'm understanding is that inventory is an issue because some of the shops are getting inventory Mm -hmm. from overseas that they are not currently getting. So there's going to be all kinds of, of, uh, of issues for the businesses. Um, the SBA has already set up some loan programs. And, and so you know we're going to be following that, providing all that information to our members. And um, we, we have not suspended. We are, we are not actively um, marketing coming to Yellow Springs. I mean, we're being, we're being very low key about it. We're saying we're, you know, visitors, shops aren't, aren't closed, things aren't closed, but we're not advertising events. Obviously there aren't any events to advertise, but we're, we're, we're gonna kind of suspend our Facebook posts and encouraging people to come, but we're not going to, certainly not gonna say don't come. Um, you know, we're telling people to use their discretion. Um, so, you know, we know that, you know, we do have things that, that, you know, can be helpful. Walking in the Glen could be, you know, it, it shouldn't be something that could be, you know, that would, where people would be coming in close proximity. So, you know, I'm hoping the businesses will be able to get through and we'll find a way to work together to, to make it, to make it happen and to support each other. And then at the end of, and hopefully it won't be long, hopefully this will all settle down soon, so. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. And your comments and also uh, Kellyanne's comments uh, do make me think that another piece of uh, what we were talking about are, um, you know, making sure that, that folks that are going to be in need um, are on our radar. And I will say that uh, the work, you know, that um, Florence Randolph has done, um, you know, that position has been really critical to expanding our list of knowing who in the village uh, we need to help, which is why I think, Chief, you felt pretty competent or confident that, um, you know, if you have resources that you guys know a lot of the people um, that, that are, you know, going to have needs and, you know, we need to continue to, you know, expand that network. So, I, you know, I think that's really important um, and, and something that I agree. This is an opportunity to make sure we know everybody that needs to be covered. So, thanks. Um, Laura, were you going to? Just one other thing. The website specific to Ohio and coronavirus is www.coronavirus, like one word, dot Ohio, spell out Ohio, dot gov. And that gives the Ohio specific information. There are checklists there for people who want to prepare to shoulder in place so to speak or isolate in place and other checklists as well all right um and friend, if yeah you i have one other thing and not stealing audrey's uh, thunder but um i was advised that the ys news uh, on their website for events um that folks had planned that they're canceling uh you can go to the website the ys news website and I think coronavirus response, and then you, there's a form you fill out um, that can provide information about whatever gathering you had planned over the next several days. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so any other questions or comments? Um, so I think we have a resolution that we want to introduce. Um, so uh, Judy, I guess, why don't we read this in full? Okay. This is Resolution 2020-11, authorizing the use of technology for holding official meetings of council while under a state of emergency. 
Whereas the governor of the state of Ohio has declared a state of emergency in response to the COVID-19 situation, and whereas council understands that there are essential functions of government which will need to continue, and whereas Sunshine Law prohibits meetings to be held through the use of technology and require in-person participation by officials, now therefore be it resolved by the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Green County, Ohio, that Section 1, in an effort to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of all citizens, including council members, citizens, and staff, if necessary, council does hereby authorize the use of technology to hold essential meetings. Section 2, in an effort to comply with the spirit and intent of Sunshine Law, any such meeting will be live streamed to the public and information as to how to access the meeting will be publicized online in the Yellow Springs News and by means of notices. Section 3, the use of technology to hold a meeting will be used only to the extent determined lawful. Section 4, this resolution shall be in effect only during a declared state of emergency. Section that should be 5, this resolution shall be in full force and effect immediately upon adoption. Okay. Can I get a motion? I move. Second. All right. Um, so who is going to speak to this? Well, I can speak to it only because I had a, a phone call with Chris Conard, and I know that it was swayed as well, but uh, he's still trying to determine whether we can lawfully do this, but the idea of the resolution is that uh, it's likely that there will be some determination that there can be alternate methods to hold up a public meeting for, for government officials, and then in that case, we've got the resolution ready to it's already in place, we can go ahead. We don't have to wait and pass something. Because it does say to the extent lawful. So Correct. we just don't know what that means yet. We don't know, yeah, what okay. that means yet. <clears throat> All right, any other questions or comments? I would just say, if we do, that a lot of things council does can be put off to the future. You know, a, a lot of information is publicly available as reports that people can read online. But I guess I would ask that decisions that we make, if they can be put off a month or two months, that they are put off until we can have public hearing. Like the second reading on this codification of the connection fees. Now, that doesn't seem to have stirred a lot of public interest. However, it is an ordinance change. And so if somebody did want to comment, and it's not necessarily, I'm looking at Johnny Burns, necessarily something we have to do in the next month. We could put it off to April, May or something. Well, so, and I will say that wouldn't on the be agenda. A, yeah, a public hearing wouldn't be permitted or as public part of that comment. I, you know, well, yeah, we've mm -hmm. already done the hearing, but comments. Right. We haven't done the hearing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's uh, a good thing to remember. Um, okay, other questions or comments? I mean, I was just going to say, um, <laughs> I paused because I know I'm uh, opening a door, but, um, but Josue and I have talked about it, Sean's talked about it. Um, depending on the way things go, we want to explore the possibilities of more robust participation, even if people aren't here. Um, so not exactly sure what that looks like, but the ability for people to ask questions potentially or provide like feedback even if they're not in the audience live um, is something that I, I think is you know part of our due diligence in figuring out what we potentially might need to do um, but that would have to be there'd have to be parameters around that because that can't like take over an entire meeting um, but just so I guess the public knows that we're also thinking about if we have to change the way we do business, you know, and the short or medium term, that um, there are some different things that we can do that technology would facilitate. Uh, any other questions or comments about this resolution? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, all right, what else do we wanna talk about, if anything? We have a press release that we're preparing uh, to release uh, the end of this meeting or sometime later today. And this summarizes the actions that I mentioned that we'll be closing the John Bryan Center for Recreational and Educational Activities and that we will continue operations as planned. And if there's folks, anyone has any questions, our phone lines will still be staffed. They'll still operate as normal. So that'll be next step for us. So can we add to that press release 
like something related to addressing the meals thing and maybe suggest that the um, uh, the dispatch window is a place to come to ask for assistance I, I mean I don't know exactly I'm just thinking out loud but mm -hmm. um, you know chief talked about like having resources I'm kind of imagining um, there could be some like food cards that we've had before or whatever that um, you know be nice to you know sort of have something out there since we know that schools going to be closed after Monday mm -hmm. and the Bryan Center I guess after tomorrow or tomorrow yes I can see that we can include a note that snacks for our youth population will be available uh, through the officers and through the dispatch window as Brian had indicated um, any donations, any donations. Okay. I I would I would like to think about that a little bit more uh, because if the food pantries are closing and we have a sudden rush of people that would be something we may not be able to handle Mm -hmm. So I would I would much rather handle it discreetly, directly with the youth that we already know and the community partners, because if we publicly announce that we have uh, food available, I fear that we would have a rush of people coming to us and we couldn't properly serve them. So that would be my my concern. Mm -hmm. I I wrote down your comment about engaging the schools to identify mm -hmm. those additional youth that we are not already engaging. Mm -hmm. And that's an action item for us, and that's something that we could do and we could manage. An open public statement that we have food or resource available, I think, may may lead to a circumstance that I'm not sure we could handle. Yeah. Well, if we if we were able to get enough cash donations, and whether we're actually stockpiling food or not is a separate issue. But if we have enough cash donations, uh, might it be possible to say, hey, we've got a, a certain supply of I don't know. $50 gift cards to Tom's. I, oh, I see some heads moving. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just to, an idea. Yes, I, I, I want to say that's great, but I don't have anything in hand to be uh, able to offer. Right. If, if and when we do, yeah. yes, I would love to be able to make okay. that public statement. Uh, just to comment, I, mm -hmm. I know what Lawrence would say if she had the floor. Money. So, and let her do her thing because that's here and now and she's out all day doing things we're getting things for certain things and that works the best if that's an option and then in addition to that what I mentioned before just the quick snack foods for kids you know good stuff if you can um, and then we'll make sure it gets distributed properly also one last thing if you uh, are concerned for a neighbor's well-being or anything Please call the police department. We'll, we'll do a welfare check, and then we can engage with that person. We do have a pretty good connectivity right now with most of our um, residents in need, So, um, but that's always kind of a growing thing for us. So any contact that um, we can make, we'd appreciate. I, I know that you know this is moving very quickly, and we're trying to respond very quickly, um, but I also do think that a, a collaboration between other stakeholders like the, the schools, you know, and bringing people together so that we all understand what each entity is doing and how we're going to collaborate to respond to some of these needs is really important and that is going to happen quickly, but I don't think we should make too many decisions mm -hmm. about it, directing people to come like to the dispatch window or mm -hmm. whatever until we understand what is our village-wide response and then we communicate <clears throat> very clearly all of the key points. And I think that will be within the next, you know, 48 hours or by the latest by Monday that mm -hmm. we'll have a more aligned view. Mm -hmm. Right, we have a meeting scheduled for 7.30 tomorrow. That meeting was originally scheduled at the senior center and not of consideration for the senior population. I think well, we moved the meeting to the gym. Uh, much bigger space we can accommodate the social distancing required um, so we would know more at the conclusion of tomorrow's meeting what resources are available within our community and what will be the challenges that we need to overcome during this period and I understand some of you would be at this meeting tomorrow 
Well, I'll, if my plans remain intact, I will be traveling soon. So um, if I want to leave some of my travel cash that I happen to have on me uh, with a dispatch window, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. We appreciate that. Think twice, my friend. So I, I'm getting a couple texts here about uh, making sure that there's designated places that people can leave donations, that there's some sort of structure to that. So I would say once that gets figured out, uh, that will be information that's posted because we don't want suddenly bags of ramen getting flung at the building. <laughs> we <laughs> kind of need to designate a recipient for those things and a you know structure for delivery and all that kind of thing, which we can certainly get in place. Um, so watch Facebook, watch the village website, and we'll have more information. Sounds good. Yes. Okay. Um, so Judy, were we supposed to talk about the agenda for? Well, only to or, say, do yeah. you, are you still guys still good meeting? Do you still want to hold the meeting? Are we going right ahead? I, I only put it in front of you because you really don't have anything earth shattering. Mm -hmm. um, and and Brian, ahead. I'm sorry if I may. Before we get into the agenda. Yeah. Um, you had asked about the, the public statement. I have it up on the screen mm -hmm. so that we could look at it. And if there's anything that you feel that we need to add in there, we can, we can decide that now. So I will read it to you or I'll just scroll through and let you read it. Uh, sure, go ahead and read it. So Yellow Springs, Ohio, March 12, 2020. Beginning, March, uh, Friday, beginning Friday, March 13th, 2020, the John Bryan Center will close until April 6th to non-governmental activities such as sports leagues, dance programs, special events, and all educational activities at the John Bryan Youth Center. Governor, Governor Mike DeWine has issued an order canceling all mass gatherings of 100 individuals or greater in schools for a three-week period. We are taking this temporary action out of concern for the, safe, for the health and safety of the general public as well as village staff. We appreciate the understanding and cooperation of those with scheduled activities. We ask that the public enter the building for official business only. We strongly encourage utility customers that utilize the in-person services to make utility payments using the Dropbox. As of today, according to the Department of, Vento, uh, the Department of Health, five people have tested positive for the virus. 52 are now under investigation. Uh, no one knows how severe this outbreak will be. Given this uncertainty, we are taking proactive steps to address a number of business concerns. First and foremost, we want to maintain a safe workplace place space and encourage practices protecting health of employees, customers, visitors, uh, or others. We also want to ensure the cont continuity of business operation during this pandemic. We ask all employees and visitors to the John Bryan Center to cooperate in taking steps to reduce the transmission of communicable diseases employees and visitors are reminded of the following stay home when you're sick wash your hands frequently with warm soapy water for at least 20 seconds cover your mouth with tissue whenever you sneeze discard uh, use tissues in the trash avoid people who are sick with rep with respiratory system clean frequently touch surfaces the village of yellow springs will provide alcohol-based hand sanitizers throughout the john bryan center cleaning sprays and wipes will also uh, be provided to clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces such as telephones and keyboards. It is critical that employees and visitors do not visit the John Bryan Center while they are experiencing respiratory symptoms such as fever, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, runny nose or stuffy nose, body aches, headaches, chills, or fatigue. Currently, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that employees and visitors remain home until at least 24 hours after they are free of fever or signs of a fever without the use of fever reducing medication. Please understand that the information we are receiving from the Center for Disease Control as well as Governor Mike DeWine, Ohio Department of Health, the Greene County Public Health Commissioners, Greene County EMA is changing rapidly. Therefore, we will continue to monitor uh, the safety recommendations and mandates. Ohio Department of Health is the lead respondent agency and has set up a toll-free hotline for questions <coughs> regarding the COVID-19. Please call 1-833-4-ACTS-ODH, and that is 1-833-427-5634, or visit the dedicated website at coronavirus.ohio.gov. We urge residents to follow recommendations by the, the Ohio Department of Health. I listed this. 
uh, picture that's released by the Ohio Department of Health, um, which are practices to be adopted to prevent the spread of uh, the virus. And that is the end of the press relief. Press release, we also included this, uh, this uh, comment from the Twitter account of the Ohio Department of Health, which explains social distancing as what does the social distancing mean for me? If you can telecommute, you should avoid people who are sick. Non-essential large gatherings should be canceled, postponed. Do not attend any events or gathering if you are sick. Avoid healthcare settings, even if you're not ill. Um, all right, so I have two comments. So first of all, um, so we're officially just announcing this kind of now, right? Um, as far as like the effects on the Bryan Center, yes, those activities. Yes, two days ago um, we released a statement that we were remaining open. This is an update to right to that. Um, so, besides the youth center, are there any other activities of significance going on tomorrow? Tomorrow we have one activity, the the seven thirty a.m. meeting, uh -huh. uh, but we begin canceling all other activities. Um. All right, so I guess I would recommend that uh, we, uh, since this is just now happening, allow the youth center to be open tomorrow um, because the schools aren't closing until after Monday. And I think it would be good to let them know, you know, what's happening. So, um, so anyway, so if, if, if we can have some leeway on that activity, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that would be a recommendation. Um, it may also be a way to kind of interact with them and just let them know, like, while they're not in school, mm -hmm. um, that they could, you know, find a police officer or something. And the second thing is, I feel like we should add a line that says, um, if the village can help match you with a social service or something and and give them the the main line okay so um i mean i think that we you know we we know a lot about where to plug people in and so i think we should <coughs> offer that resource so. okay i um i'm processing i think that we have some capacity to be able to link services but that will be very limited through our current social services resources with the police department. I think the it requires a coordinated a coordinated effort with other nonprofit organizations as to who needs what to be able to direct people where to go. What I could commit to right now would be that we could build out a page with all the dedicated services that are available to our residents and where to guide them. Um, because I, we could gather that information and organize it for what's available in Yellow Springs. Maybe given the meeting tomorrow morning, there, you might wait until that meeting and right. bring that up and then put out a unified A unified list, yes. Yeah. Yep. Because my concern is that when we don't have overnight services and many of our calls get directed at dispatch, and I don't want dispatch, the 911 system, to get taken up <coughs> by... Uh, service for calls. So that would be my primary concern. I wouldn't want to take any bandwidth or any capacity from the 911 emergency system to flag questions maybe, well, what pantries are open or where do I go for X service? Um, so that that's my only hesitation. I don't want to overburden the 911 system. Yeah, I think that's now, valid. So I think uh, I would just like there to be something and so whether it's you know a reference to a web page or yes some, some other you we, know, we and, and i agree i think that we may know more tomorrow morning so right so we would we would set up a separate page on our website to list those resources and some of that would come tomorrow now as to the youth center um i would like to have uh, johnny's perspective weigh in as he supervises the uh John Bryan Youth Center activities. On the Youth Center, we've already made notification. We've got letters going out, and we're making sure that the school is aware that as of tonight it was closed. And so we're trying to get ahead of it. We've already let the staff know. They was making sure that everybody knows the day, and they've contacted the school. So I, I would hate to go backwards on that. Mm -hmm. 
and say, oh, yeah, you can come tomorrow because if we can stop it today, then we need to stop it today. Mm -hmm. Uh, would it be possible to have the staff person there so if people just show up? Samantha will be here tomorrow, but we can guide them back home. Right, but I mean yes. that there's a person there. won't be no, just knocking on the door. Somebody right. will be here. We're going to have her do some other things yeah. so she can be here to let them know that it is In case is they just don't Correct. learn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. And probably one of the things that we could do tomorrow, too, is if we need kids that come, we could assess their needs while they're here and see if, if there's someone that we need to track over the next three weeks. And yeah. by track, I mean just checking in on them and see if there's any resources we need to provide. I, I think as far as, I think staff needs to get together before we determine what we can do to help versus having a mass bunch of people come down here. And I, I have some ideals, but I think we as staff need to sit down and talk about it versus put it all out there and then try to figure out what we're doing mm -hmm. well and if I could just comment I agree with Mary Ann's caution about <clears throat> waiting to see what you find out tomorrow because you know interestingly you've already mentioned that food pantries are closing so we can't direct people to services which may actually have closed down or be unavailable and we're also talking about flattening the curve in terms of pressure on essential services we don't want to fatten the curve back up by, you know, sending people off in that direction. So I think that's a really thoughtful mm -hmm. uh, conversation that needs to happen before we put out information that directs people places. And, and it seems like that may be what's happening tomorrow, but mm -hmm. I, would, I would agree with Marianne's caution on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And can I make a suggestion that you put out how and when we as a village would be notified if we in fact have a, the, a virus here in Yes. Yes. The reporting is being led by the Department of Health on any confirmed cases. Particularly, there's the website that we referenced earlier, um, and I also believe that any <coughs> any no, any announcements on confirmed cases are going to be well publicized. There will be somebody from the health department at the meeting tomorrow. Excellent. So one of the comments I keep hearing as we wrap things up is uh, developing policy on the fly. And um, I realize that there are some things that, you know, we can, uh, you know, be proactive about, some things that we can't be. Um, and also some things that, you know, again, we don't want to overact, overreact on. Um, but I, I do want to, like, note what I think Lisa recognized, which is that sometimes notifications don't get to everybody. Um, and, and certainly that's true for the schools and everybody else. Um, and that secondly, you know, we want to have some kind of recognition around, um, I think we have a significant problem for a number of villagers for three weeks that um, I don't want to get lost in the shuffle, but I understand that we need to balance that with what we can, you know, reasonably accommodate and what we have the capacity for. So, um, you know, so again, I, I don't want those messages to be lost. And I think that, yeah, honestly, there is a little bit of scrambling because the federal and state government doesn't help with this. And, uh, you know, local governments are, um, Try to be as responsive as we can, right? So, um, okay. So then, anything else before we talk about? So, Judy, you wanted to talk about Monday's meeting. Is that? Oh, I'm I am throwing it out to you. I don't know how. Okay. So to me, want to, proceed. to me, having a council meeting is essential business. And um, again, I, I think we should accommodate, you know, like we do, people being able to par participate remotely. Um, I don't know if council members feel like they're at the point where they want to participate remotely, um, but I'll entertain, uh, you know. Yeah, well, I think we should have the council meeting. I would come. I mean, if there are council members who wouldn't, then it's up to them, I guess. But if we start start now, not meeting, when it hasn't really gotten, I mean, we could go on for months and months, and I don't particularly want to do that. I don't think it's at the point where we need to do that. I think we can take precautions 
and neat. <clears throat> well, we won't let 100 people in the room. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. 99. Unlikely <laughs> that 100 people or even maybe 10. <laughs> Depending on the issues. Um, so I'll be away. Um, I just sent some of you a note asking uh, if I wanted to participate in the executive session, um, how to do that. So I'll definitely look at the packet and see if there's other things I want to listen in on, but I anticipate probably, depending on what's happening uh, Monday evening in Anna Maria Island, Florida, um, connecting for the executive session. I okay. plan on having a, a Zoom session open for you. Okay. So you'll be able to listen in. Great. Lisa? Um, if we are ill, we should not attend. Yes. <laughs> It's nice if we can have a little space and we'll be missing a person, so there's plenty of room. Oh, totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, for us to be a little bit, I mean, I, I don't see any reason. I, I agree with, with Marianne. We, you know, we're, we're taking precautions and I see that we should meet. Yep. Okay. Laura, Great. anything else you want? Okay, good. And I think yeah. also, I'll just butt in. <laughs> it does set, for those people to, who are experiencing anxiety, to continue some degree of normalness is helpful. Normalness that's mm -hmm. taking precautions. Now we, we might want to reach out to some of our guests and give them the option yes, to I, defer their presentation I will do to, that with to a different date if, mm -hmm. if that makes them happy yep. mm -hmm. and feel safer. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess actually related to that, what what is the possibility of Skyping in a um, a special report person or something like that. I mean, can we pop them up on the screen? Yes, we should be able to. Just as I as we're able to put up anything up on that screen, we can have audio play out of this. We just need to activate the speakers. Uh, that will be something I'll need to coordinate with uh, with Sean because I think that we need to work through some technical issues with feedback on the mics. Um, is that? Uh, so we would have to, we can test it in the coming days and figure it out. Okay. I think it's worth exploring because mm -hmm. um, I can imagine other meetings that we would have, you know, uh, as well. Yes. So, um, so we would t try that out possibly Monday and. But yeah, I, I want to reiterate what Lisa said. Um, if, you know, anybody that doesn't feel well, uh, I think the, the advice is pretty clear that you stay home, stay home. and um, and we're going to look at how we can continue to facilitate. I mean, that's actually, I think, a positive in that, you know, there should be more um, uh, ability to participate in meetings using uh, modern technology. Um, so, uh, so we'll see, you know, where, where that goes. Um, okay. So, do we have any other So ju just, just so that I'm clear, we're going to invite some of the participants who are presenting to offer them an option to defer a presentation. I can ask Mark Ewalt and also Gina Marie, if one, if they would prefer not to come, mm -hmm. and or if they can Skype. Would that be the way that it would happen through that medium? It would be a preferably a Zoom session. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a Zoom account, so we can set that up. And does, does the person at home have to have that account? Or? Uh, why don't we just, if they, have them get a hold of me if they want to okay. do this remotely, and okay. then we'll work I'll it out that. from mm -hmm. there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I just got one.